Iktomi was not always called Iktomi. He had a different name. He was like a counselor because he was known for his wisdom. And there was something kind of odd about him too, though. And it had to do with his physical appearance. Half of his body was in motion, meaning it didn't really have a solid form. So as he walked, sometimes his eye might move in a direction where he really looks goofy. You see what I mean? And so people would laugh. But they would calm down and they would apologize and say, I'm sorry. They would try to make him feel not bad. But when you first saw him, it just looked funny. So it was hard to not laugh. Well, after a time, that got to his head. And so he decided he's going to play a trick on some people. And it backfired horribly. And the result was that he lost his standing as counselor. And he became known as a trickster. So that's when his name changed to Iktomi. What I just said was a really short version because this is really normally it's a long story. And it branches out into other stories and it you learn all kinds of things. But I just want to focus in on the Iktomi character, yeah, so I'm just taking the very, very short cut here. But it still explains to you that he wasn't always a trickster, but that he became that way. That shows you that people can fall from grace. So what he's teaching is duality. These Iktomi stories are really cool because they work on several levels. The basic level is that it teaches you that if you do something, then these are going to be the consequences. Whatever that something is, if you're a guy and you fall in love with your mother-in-law and you run away with her, there's going to be certain consequences. And there's <laughs> there's the Iktomi story like that. Yeah, It's just hilarious. <laughs> but see, it's teaching you don't marry your mother-in-law. <laughs> it's possible to fall in love with your mother-in-law. When you look at the uh, Teoshpae concept, the Teoshpae concept is where you have many mothers and many fathers. Let me explain it like this. Your mother and all her sisters are all your mothers, and they're equally important. All the husbands of these women are your fathers. And all the children from these marriages are your brothers and sisters. Now, your mother's brothers are your uncles. Their wives are your aunties. And their children are your cousins. That's your mom's side of the family. Okay, now let's go to your father's side. Your father... And his brothers are your other fathers. And the wives of these men are your other mothers. The children from these marriages are your other brothers and sisters. Your father's sisters are your other aunts or aunties, depending on how you say that. The husbands of your aunties are your other uncles and the children from those marriages are your other cousins. This is a Teoshpae. So in a Teoshpae, it is possible that, let's say 10 years before you were born, let's say your mother had a sister, that your mother's parents had a baby. So your mother has a little sister, and then 10 years later, you're born. So 
your auntie is just 10 years older than you. But remember, this is a Teoshpae, so she's not your auntie. This is your mother's sister. That means that's your mother too. So you have a mother who's only 10 years older than you. Okay? Now, let's say that everybody grows up. Let's say you're 20 years old. Let's say your mother is 42 years old. And your other mother is 30 years old. You're 20 years old. Your mom that you were born from, let's say she's 42 years old. And your second mom is 30 years old. So your second mom is just 10 years older than you. Now you get married. And let's say your husband is 5 years older than you which means he's five years younger than your second mom. So she's still a young woman, your second mom. And let's say your husband starts becoming attracted to your second mom. And then they have an affair. And they decide to take off. Because remember, she's just five years older than your husband. It's still very possible for a physical attraction. See what I mean? So in this way, your husband ran away with his mother-in-law. Do you see what I mean? That's how that can happen in a Teoshpae. So you don't marry your mother-in-law. <laughs> and there is an Iktomi story that's like that. It's really crazy. So let me go ahead and tell that story. Iktomi marries his mother-in-law. Oh, boy. <laughs> okay. It's a similar situation to what I just explained, that Iktomi started to fall in love with one of his mother-in-laws. And one time, this mother-in-law was picking chook cherries out away from the camp. So Iktomi followed her, and then he tried to kiss her. And she slapped him. Because, see, you're not... <laughs> Boy, man, he's already breaking the tradition here. Your parents-in-law, you're not supposed to talk to them as a sign of respect. You don't even make eye contact. That is a sign of respect in Lakota culture. So, you are not to talk to your parents-in-law. And you're not even supposed to look them in the eye. This is a sign of respect. So the fact that Iktomi was really checking out his mother-in-law, <laughs> he was already breaking tradition. Yeah. <laughs> so when he was trying to kiss this lady, she really slapped him. Why do you think you're doing, you fool? And then, slap. He tried it again anyway, yeah? And he kept persisting until finally she gave in and they started kissing. And then she pulled away and she said, I can't do this. She said, I don't want to hurt my daughter, she said. And Iktomi said, well, she'll never know. So every day they would meet in these bushes and they started to have sex. And Iktomi said, let's run away. And <laughs> the mother-in-law said, I don't want to hurt my daughter like this. You see. So then Iktomi said, I have a plan. He said, just wait for me here at these bushes tonight. He said, I'm going to come here and then we'll take off. So then that lady said, okay, and, and don't worry. He said, your, your daughter will not be hurt. So she said, okay. So then Iktomi went home and he said to his wife, Well, I'm going to go hunt some buffalo, he said. So his wife said, Okay. So he said, I'll be back when I get a big one, he said. So she said, Okay. So he took off. And then he went to where his mother-in-law was and then they, they took off. Nobody knows what happened to them. They never came back. Nobody 
even thought that maybe he ran off with his mother-in-law. Nobody even thought that because this rule is very strict. So it didn't even come to anybody's attention that maybe he took off with his mother-in-law. The people didn't even think of it because that rule is so strict. So he was gone. So Ikdomi and this his mother-in-law, they were living way out in the country by themselves. And then she got pregnant. She had the first kid. Hey, this kid was just honorary, yeah? Just at ah in the head, yeah? <laughs> it's off. There's something wrong with this kid. He'd be walking around, he bumps into a tree, and then he... Instead of going around the tree, he still tries to go through the tree. So this kid stands there and keeps bumping into the tree over and over and over until he gets tired and falls on the ground, falls asleep. That's the kind of kid that this child was. Something is wrong with this kid. <laughs> Nine months later, she had another one. Same thing. This kid is goofier than heck. I mean, he's not a comedian. He just, there's something wrong with these two kids. Nine months later, a third one was born. This kept happening until she had 19 kids. Every nine months, 19 kids. Jeez, it was getting difficult. There's always the baby crying. And there's something wrong with all of these kids. It's like there's a screw loose in their head. They're not violent. They're just off. Yeah? And it's really hard because there's 19 of them. And so Iktomi says, we need help raising these kids. He said, let's go find a camp to live in and maybe the people will help us with these kids. So the mother-in-law said, okay. And so they packed up what they had. And Stevie's kids, they never kept their hair brushed or anything. So their hair is just scraggly and they didn't even comb it or nothing. Yeah? And their clothes are just tattered because the Ikdomi is not even a good hunter. So this is a family of vegetarians. <laughs> Their clothes were mostly made out of tree bark and weeds and <laughs> things like that. Eee, they look just rugged there. <laughs> so Iktomi said, I know a camp. Let's travel by night so we'll get there faster. So they said, okay. All these kids started scattering. Yeah, They were looking for butterflies. And it's nighttime. Yeah, so they're just wandering around, bumping into trees, bumping into each other, and Ikdomi was like, gee, many crackers, he's, gosh darn it, what am I going to do about these kids? So he, somehow, he found some vines, and he started to make a rope out of it, and then he caught his kids, 19 of them, and he tied their hands together, and then he tied each kid to each other at the waist. This way they can't take off. Yeah. <laughs> and then they proceeded to walk towards this camp. Now, Ikdomi, he knew where he was going. But he didn't tell his mother-in-law. So they got close to this camp. And it was getting close to morning time now because they were walking all night. After 19 children, how many years do you think passed by? Pretty close to 15 years. It's more like about 14 and a half, but let's say 15 years had gone by since they left that camp. Now, the mother-in-law doesn't know where they're at, okay, because they were traveling that night. So Ikdomi said, okay, I'm going to go into the camp and I'll introduce myself. I uh, don't want them to get scared if we just all show up, he said. So I'll go in by myself and then I'll tell the people about our problem and then they'll come with me. Then they can help us with these children. So the mother-in-law said, okay. 
So Iktomi took off, and he went to this cliff. It wasn't too high, but it was still a cliff. Maybe it's about four meters high. All right? That's about 16 feet, something like that. Anyway, he went up to this cliff, and then he threw himself over. And he kept doing that. And he climbed back up to the top, and he threw himself over again. How come he's doing that? Yes, he's just climbing up this cliff and he's throwing himself over. Hits the ground. <gasps> he gets up and he does it again. He kept doing that until he was all bruised up. Then he tangled his hair, threw dirt in his hair, and his clothes were already torn. So then he walked to that cat. He's really staggering. People came, they surrounded him. They said, hey, who's this guy? He said, hey, guys, remember me? He said, I, I used to live here 15 years ago. He said, I went to go buffalo hunting, and here the enemy captured me. He said. So they were like, and nah, gee. They said, so yeah, the enemy captured me, and they made a cage out of tree branches. E, that was tough cage, he said. I couldn't even break up. He said, oh, they, they, they made me do things, he said. They're, 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 I was their slave, so they made me do all kinds of things. And I wanted to escape, so I decided that I'm not going to eat anything. He said, I'm not going to eat anything, and I'm going to get really skinny so I can fit between the cage bars, between the tree branches. So this way he can squeeze himself between these tree branches that made this cage. <laughs> yeah. So <laughs> maybe about several days went by and geez, he was just bony. And so he managed to squeeze through, he said. So I managed to squeeze through the cage. And it was early in the morning. And so um, after I got out, he said, I managed to capture the whole tribe and I took them prisoners. They're right over there beyond that ridge, he said. They're all tied up, he said. <laughs> so so the, the people were really like, wow, this this guy, this Iktomi guy is a warrior and a half. See, many. He captured the whole enemy tribe. Wow. So they really thought he was some kind of a super warrior. Yeah, he said. Yeah, they're just over there. They're all tied up. He said. He said, "Oh, I'm too tired." He said, "Can you guys go get them?" He said, "I'm too. I need to. I need to eat something." He said. So somebody brought him a piece of meat. It was the first time he ate meat in 15 years. Yeah, so geez, he just gobbled it up. And then he laid down. He said, "I gotta take a rest." He said, "I'm really tired." So these warriors went to that location, and they found that lady, the 19 kids, yeah, all tied up. Because <laughs> remember, he tied them together because they kept taking off, yeah? <laughs> so, so the warriors, they looked at the prisoners, and they said, See, look at that, they're all kids. So I wonder what kind of tribe this is. <laughs> <laughs> and here the mother-in-law she recognized one of the men and she said hey brother-in-law said, it's me she said and then he looked at her and said is that hey what are you doing here and she said these are my kids she said and he's like huh so who's their father he said he went into that camp over there he said <laughs> That's home, he said. And she was she was like, Huh? And so he said, Yes, you guys just came back. And she's like, Oh no, what am I gonna do? She She had nineteen kids for her son in law, yeah. <laughs> so they brought him back into the community and then the other people recognized her. 
and they're like, oh, jeez. And they saw these 19 kids, and they're like, oh, jeez, this is Iktomi. He's no warrior. Iktomi was sleeping, so they woke him up, and they banned him from that group. So they told him to leave, never come back. So you're not one of us anymore. He really broke a bunch of rules here. So different relatives, they took in these children and fed them. And after several months went by, and these kids got fat. I mean, not chubby fat. Before, they looked like skeletons. So now they're fattened up, and they're not crazy anymore. This is what happens when you only eat vegetables, you're going to go crazy. <laughs> that's for that's for you goofy vegans and vegetarians. Huh? <laughs> so these kids, once they start eating meat, they were okay. They weren't walking around bumping into trees, chasing butterflies and they were like normal children after that. So the family took them in and different families raised them. And, and Iktomi's wife, she remarried another man who was a good man. She wasn't mad that her first husband, Iktomi, took off with her mother-in-law because she had a good man now. And 15 years had gone by. So she lost all her feelings for Iktomi. She didn't want him there anyway. So for the mother-in-law and the children, they got to stay. And as soon as the children start eating buffalo meat, they turned out okay. They weren't bumping into trees anymore. See, that's what happens when you become a vegetarian. You're going to go off. Yeah? <laughs> so, so the, geez, the marriage it had 19 kids with his mother-in-law. <laughs> I captured a whole enemy tribe, he said. <laughs> His kids kept bumping into trees because they, cause they didn't eat any meat. Huh? <laughs> oh, man, it's ridiculous. <laughs> But she hears this in Lakota, it's so much funnier because it uses words that sound funny. <laughs> when you hear that word and you picture this in your mind, these really off kids bumping into trees. and <laughs> <laughs> Oh, man, this is crazy. See, that's an example of a funny Iktomi story. Yeah. <laughs> Oh my gosh, that that one just makes me laugh. <laughs> I captured a whole tribe, he said. <laughs> They're his own kids. <laughs> oh shit, that one's crazy. <laughs> oh, for crying out loud, okay. <laughs> Every time I think of that, to me, that's one of the funniest ones, yes. They married his mother-in-law. <laughs> Nineteen kids. See? <laughs> in, in the Catholic Church, he would be a hero, yeah? <laughs> that should say something about the Catholic Church. <laughs> To read more about Lakota Star Knowledge Spirituality, you can read my book called Wichoha Otehige. You can see the book cover on the right side of this screen. This book contains the information to what I talk about on my Lakota Spirituality videos. To purchase this book, please click below where it says Show More. Clicking on that link will open up the description below. And there you will see a link called to purchase my books. As you will see, it's an eBay link. Click on that eBay link and there you will see the information to get this book. 
Lila Pila Mayelo. Thank you very much.